Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to another reaction to Game Theory. Matt just uploaded Game Theory, FNAF, Your Pain Fuels Us, and based off of the last Game Theory episode on FNAF, I'm guessing he's going to continue looking into 1.35am, because he did say that he had one more episode prepared where he wanted to look into one story specifically and uncover the truth of it. Now, I don't know what story that is, but I guess we're gonna find out pretty soon. Anyways, let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into Game Theory FNAF, Your Pain Fuels Us. And here we go. Okay, it looks like we got a uh, grave. Don't know what that says. What's he digging out? A robotic arm? Okay. What is going on here? Is that Remnant? Huh. It's alive. It's alive. It's a Ooh. Yikes, Matt. That you got something going on with your eye right now. Hello, game Internet. Theory. Welcome, Welcome to, to Game Theory. Theory. Today we're covering the scariest topic in all of FNAF lore, the timeline. Oh my god, is this a timeline episode? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, jeez, no, I hate myself, the books? but not that much. Whew, I'll probably have to do that at some point down the line, but not today. No, what we're Wait until security breach, probably. A different timeline. You see, there's a new monster afoot in the FNAF universe. A killer Stitray? that has horrifically taken the lives of nearly a dozen people. A killer as yet unseen in the games, but one probably who will, the theory, provide us with key hmm. insights into how this whole FNAF universe works, the true nature of Remnant, and how ghosts can possess Endos skeletons as i said isn't that, a, isn't that a toy in yes, skeleton i have a feeling he'll be showing up soon maybe as soon as the new game security breach. Ooh, but if, if we are talking about the stitch race i don't think so but what i'll listen are and where he's headed to next you see last fnaf theory we did a surface level analysis mm -hmm. of 1 35 a.m latest installment right of the Fazbear Fright series. And boy was that one a biggie, with huge revelations about sister location, ultimate custom knight's vengeful spirit, and the real identity, or should I say identities. Yeah, that was a weird one. And looking back, since the Fazbear Frights books became a thing, I've done five theories on them, covering Yikes. many, many connections that they have to the various facets of FNAF lore. From new strings of murders happening in 1985, to the mm. true identity of psychic friend Fred Bear. But despite well, maybe. all of this new FNAF talk there's been one element i've largely been glossing over the stitch ring. yep and there it is picked up any of is that jeff the killer yet, <laughs> underneath that cloak contains three short stories right that's the selling feature it's what's advertised on the back of the box so to speak but each mm -hmm. one also comes with a bit of a bonus in reality each book is more like three and a fifth story <laughs> you see each one ends with an epilogue our little mcu post credits teaser giving us a honestly that's a really cool another story connection the tale of the stitch wraith a story Story that appears to be spanning out across the FNAF the book universe. Every book in this new series, and that alone, which may or may not continue into Blackbird number six. Marketing tactic to keep us buying more just to see the end of this thing. Slow I know, right? But Small man. In and it's becoming clear that the tale of the Stitch Wraith isn't just another horror tale. It's instead a running thread throughout nearly every other shorter story that we've been reading through, which in turn seems to connect it both to the original trilogy of books as well as even the games. So in order to understand mm. what this thing is right. and where the lore is headed, it's time to go Easter egg hunting for a monster. I'm now, good at Easter egg my hunting. My theory on the Fazbear Frights books briefly covered the Stitch Wraith. And uh, back then, I assumed he was entered. The wraith was described in that book as a mysterious. It didn't seem like it was cloak and wearing supposed to be entered. But I guess it's changed. Marker. The description specifically calls out his two eyes, one of which appears to be blacked out, a big toothy grin with blood around the mouth, and a limping or shambling walk. White He's got mask, a cane. Blacked out eye, shamble, shamble, shake. It seems like a slam dunk for entered. However, hmm. the epilogue for 135 a.m. Oh through that hypothesis. Haven't seen this one. The window as it revealed just exactly how the Stitch Wraith was brought to life. A process that actually reveals a lot about how this series' mythos works. Oh boy. In this epilogue, we're introduced to Dr. Phineas Taggart, not to be confused with his friend, Dr. Ferb Fletcher. <laughs> Phineas is huh. a bit of a mad scientist type. I know what we're gonna do today. Power of Create some killer robots. He says himself, quote, human emotion is slower to impact. 
more insidious. It emanates from us, or is excreted from us like sweat or tears, and it wafts outward like a noxious cloud soaking into the surroundings. In particular, his research is centered around the intense emotion of agony. In order to study it, we see that Phineas collects hundreds of haunted objects to search for this emotion trapped inside. Again from the book, the word haunted could mean showing signs of torment or some kind of mental anguish. These items on Phineas's shelves weren't possessed by ghosts. The ones that were truly haunted were energized by agony. Agony, I'm convinced, huh. radiates farther from people than any other emotion, Phineas said. My work is focused on my What's with these toys? You can take a like the merchandise agony, action figures. Any sort of intelligence, even an artificial one, and they'll combine together to transmute the energy of emotion into the energy of physical action. This, I believe, is what explains what people call haunted objects. And already you might be starting to see how this all ties into what we already know about this franchise. In FNAF 6's Insanity Ending, we were introduced Oh the boy. Blueprints outlining how the sister location scooper worked, and it was the scoop. Well, it, it was not what we expected, to say the least. Through those blueprints, we learned about the mystery metal called Remnant and its ability to supposedly give life to objects mm. that it touches. The novel The Fourth Closet took it one step Good further and showed six. us the Remnant metal being created and used. In that story, we watch as William Afton melts down pieces of the old animatronics, creating a Remnant soup that he then uses to give life to new living robots, specifically the. The fun time animatronics. Yep. Quote, on the heating table rested the endoskeletons oh, of the original Freddy's animatronics. The fourth well, closet, what a time. Together, immobile and featureless, and still inhabited by the spirits of the children who had been murdered inside of them so many years ago, still filled with life and motion and thought, all trapped, all in terrible pain. Usually this goes into something mechanical, something I made, William said. If we remember back to Candy Cadet's Candy stories Cadet. of five things always becoming one thing, five kittens getting sewn together, the orphans and the keys melted down into one this is exactly I guess what not the orphans we're referring to but Phineas's experiments in 135 a.m actually take it one step further and give us more insight into the true nature of remnant things that are brought to light via remnant aren't necessarily infused with a soul but instead with agony, with agony intense eh? human emotion with extreme human suffering this is important because it means that characters like balloon boy the bitty babs and the mini renas and sister location heck even animatronics like like Mangle don't necessarily need to have actual victims associated that with them. That makes a whole lot of sense now. The series is having it be one to one all the time. Yeah. Cassidy equals Chica. Charlie equals the puppet. Cassidy equals Golden Freddy. But what we're starting to learn is that there are other ways to bring things to life in this series. That some animatronics hmm. may contain multiple souls. So now there's not hundreds of dead Freddy, kids. And some might not contain any souls at all. As long as it always ties back to some extreme tragedy filled hmm. This all powerful emotion of agony. So, with that little analysis, that fills in a huge story. We see Phineas objects associated with horrific tragedies and, via some means, funnel all the agony from them down into an endoskeleton, which we're specifically told is meant to be a stand in for bones. So, we're talking like a FNAF 1 or FNAF 2 era endoskeleton here. Phineas okay. puts the head of a large three foot doll on it, a doll whose description bears a <laughs> blank. To blank actually, from the fan game Five Nights at Candy's, and finally a battery pack before turning this beast on. A battery and pack? And does this modern Frankenstein come to life, it immediately kills its creator, Phineas, seemingly by accident, surprisingly, and then runs off. Seems kind of like Henry, too. Cloak. The Stitch Wraith has been born. But, okay, why am I making such a big deal out of this thing? Why does this guy deserve his own episode? Well, because solving the Stitch Wraith story in these books is like a game unto itself. You see, there have been... It's weird that he's including Step Closer and Bunny Cole, because those aren't the out. ...that connect things back to the Stitch Wraith. My first clue was the battery pack Phineas uses to power Jump the Stitch Wraith scale start. he's building it. Because it's not just any battery pack. It came from Fetch, the murder animatronic dog from what? the series. <laughs> Quote, the item in the second box was an animatronic dog that clearly no longer functioned. The dog was an ugly dog, with a triangle-shaped head and a wide mouth full of sharp teeth. In minutes, he'd revealed the dog's battery pack. So immediately we know that These the characters run on story batteries? was happening after the events of the fetch story from book number two. So I dug around deeper and more connections kept coming. Earlier in this same book, in the title story 135 AM about the haunted Eladal, there's one line referencing a man named Phineas looking 
looking online for a particular toy. Mm. One of the searches for Special Ella doll led her to an online ad posted by a user named Phineas who was trying to find one of the dolls. His ad referenced the Special Ella doll and said he was willing to pay a premium for the doll's energy. Overall, across the nine stories published so far, seven seem to tie back to the stitch. Seven with out of nine? A rough timeline of events. So bear with me as we go through this. We okay, here we go. 5 a.m. and Fetch must come first because Phineas is alive and looking for the Ella doll like I just mentioned. Makes and sense. evil robot dog has just started his murder spree. From there comes the story we just covered, Epilogue 3 and the Stitch Wraith's creation. After that, he begins to roam the city collecting body parts for <laughs> some purpose. You may remember book number one story to be beautiful, in which Baby hacks apart a human girl named Sarah in order to steal her identity. Uh, sometimes you forget just how dark these are. For her to fall to pieces at the end. Well, in epilogue number one, we hear that the Stitch Wraith was seen collecting those junk pieces of Sarah. I remember that. God, right? And it's not the only time that it happens either. In book number two, there's the story out of stock about a group of friends who steal a defective plush trap doll, one with hey. oddly human-like eyes and teeth, only for it to go on a rampage. The boys manage to escape by luring it in front of an oncoming train where it gets shattered to pieces. And Jeez. again, in epilogue number two, we see the Stitch Wraith on the scene salvaging whatever he can find of the broken box. Dude, and it's just like what we thought Springtrap was originally going to be. You see, in one of the Just a huge collection of, of all the characters put together. About a security guard being force-fed mini Rena dolls in the basement yeah. of Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals. There's a passing Damn, reference boy, to he's big. called the Snack Space. Hey, man, I was picking up a takeout order at Luigi's the other night and saw your ex on a date with the man. Hey, isn't that snack space. in Seems Into the Pit? Important, right? Well, it would be if this was the only time that it was mentioned, but it's popped up in one of the other stories in Into the Pit. Exactly. The very first story, the one about the time-traveling ball pit, the Snack space is where the protagonist's father works, which means that yep. Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals sister location is also in that world, which in turn connects it to one final story, Count the Way. Oh boy, here we go. Broken Funtime Freddy planning to execute a girl trapped inside of his stomach. And while these aren't necessarily directly tied to the Stitch Wraith, it certainly feels like at some point all of these stories will come together, as though we're working on chunks of a larger puzzle. We've got a big hmm. chunk over here that's the stitch wraith connections and a big chunk over here that's all connected through sister location and the snack space and then you have a few other random pieces <laughs> over here and by they the got going funny expect, go all of them will come together so assuming that they are oh boy i can't wait the for the finale of these books it's like gonna be insane only freddy the story about the kids getting mind swapped with mini freddy dolls i wish i had my freddy the only plushie one of these with stories me so far right where fazbear locations are open and ready for business at some point freddy fazbear's closes leading to room for one more about the underground facility filled with mini arenas hoping to escape, which would parallel well, let's get out of here. Sister location. Due to the massive success, success and, and even, even more so, so the unfortunate, unfortunate closing of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, pizza it's clear, clear that the stage was set. No pun intended. intended. For another contender in show God, we just played through this location. And the mini Feels so good. From that underground facility, leading to 1.35 a.m. with Phineas looking for the haunted doll and Greg activating the murder dog in an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's in Fetch. From Jeez. there, the next major moment is Stitch Ray. Come down with the editing there. Three, which then leads to his quest really gruesome. And to be beautiful epilogue one and out of stock epilogue two. We also know that Into the Pit and the New Kid happen near the end of the timeline since they both feature a closed down, forgotten, or repurposed Freddy's building. Also, there's Count the Ways, which is towards the end of this timeline, grouped with these other stories since a retired Funtime Freddy is just randomly sitting in the garage killing kids. He's just what there. All of He's just chilling. What was the purpose? Chilling and killing? Well, first, all of this seems to connect us pretty solidly into the book trilogy. The fact that we have an Ella doll infused with agony that Phineas wants Great. his hands on perfectly matches the Ella doll that Henry made for his daughter. God, I missed the old trilogy. I want to read it again. Flooding the room with its sound. A man lay curled on the floor, something cradled tightly in his arms, and when his mouth opened, the room shook <laughs> with the sound of his anguish. Who is that? Charlie said anxiously. What is he holding? You don't recognize her? Elizabeth said. That's Ella, of course. It's all your father had left after you were taken. He cried over that cheap store-bought rag doll for two months, cried into it, 
bled Jesus. into it, poured his grief over it, end quote. At which point, he makes the robotic Ella doll that we talked about in the last episode. So what we're seeing in these stories appears to be, oh at my least God. to some extent, the so aftermath dark. of that trilogy of books. Which also means that we might already know the true identity of the Stitch Wraith. It's a bit of a shot, it? but it's my personal headcanon until proven otherwise. I think that the endoskeleton that powers the Stitch Wraith. The main body that's become the conduit for the all silver eyes endo is the same endoskeleton that killed Henry. The I mean, to be fair, I did say that at the beginning. Own life. The stabbing robot, which, let's be honest, is like the most complicated way to do that sort of thing. Like, build a robot to stab you to death? What? Creative types, man, they are weird. Anyway, we're told I mean, he, you know, he's got an imagination on him. One endoskeleton with an unfinished face, which would explain exactly why Phineas needs to put a head on it. Quote from the Silver Eyes, she could see its face. If it could be called a face, its features were scarcely formed, crude and shapeless. Its blind eyes were only raised bumps like the eyes of a statue seeing nothing but its own grief. We also know that this endoskeleton would be absolutely filled to the brim with agony. Jesus. I mean, as far as endoskeletons go, a murder bot built by a grieving father is a pretty huge deal. And it's apparently an important enough character to this franchise to have also appeared at the end. It's kind of weird that we haven't been... Charlie is being attacked by baby. It's the same <laughs> oh, this is, this is funny. Knife that Charlie uses to do them both it's weird that we've never had a game where we're actively being hunted by an endoskeleton itself. It's just always been characters. Never Henry just an endo. Just saying, that would be creepy. Are in place for us. Ah! Oh, yeah, and Goof me. That the Scared me. Series is connected a bit closer to the book trilogy, like it appears to be. We know that book five, Bunny Call, features a story about a man with gruesome burns over his body in an iron will to live. I mean, we already suspected that that was William Afton, but going back to see how his story ended in the fourth closet, we see that his death is far from certain. In his final moments, his hospital gown catches fire and he's pulled into a massive furnace. But then, nothing. No official confirmation that that burning actually kills him. Therefore, oh boy. a burned man in a hospital who refuses to die sounds like a certain yellow hmm, bunny. I wonder what that could be. Always comes back. I always and come that, back. Oof, I've had enough FNAF for now. Oh man. You sure? I feel like you're going to be back soon for the new book. July, so at the very least, I get a break that for a couple of weeks. That is not the new Thank book coming out. <laughs> it's Step Closer. No, oh. No. No! It has been weird that Matt hasn't really Matt, talked about Matt, Security Matt, Breach a whole lot. Pitch these days. 2020 has really started to mess with my head. I need to relax. Oh no, I feel a sponsor coming. But I've seen all of this. Literally everything I on heard every Netflix. streaming platform. No! If only there was something no. new to watch. No! No, no sponsorship! No, not NordVPN, no! Okay, so I was not expecting this to be a timeline theory at all. I thought it was just gonna go, you know, more in depth with one of the stories in 1.35 a.m. Though, I will say, I did I did really enjoy this. Um, I think in the first book, or maybe, yeah, no, it was the first book, um, during the Stitch Wraith section, there were, um, like, little hints here and there that the stories were connected in some way. So having a game theory dedicated to connecting all of these stories together, I think that was really smart and really clever. Also, you know, like he did it in a pretty good way. It 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 was interesting because he did it quick, but at the same time, like he got all of his points across while, you know, making the actual timeline was very quick and simple. You know, he had the had the line and then it just popped up with the stories as we went down it, but you know, it was quick, it was easy, it got the point across, and he even connected it to the original trilogy, which I am so, so excited to see what these books have to offer, um, you know, with William Afton possibly making a return for Bunny Call. It's, it's weird that he didn't really mention Step Closer because it did, it did have Foxy on the cover. Step Closer has Foxy on the cover, and that's the first time we've seen like, a character from the games on the books of, you know, the Fazbear Fight series. So, it's gonna be interesting to see what that book, um, is gonna be filled with for stories, as well as Bunny Call. Also, um, interesting that I didn't mention book six and seven, which we do know are being made. Uh, book six is called Blackbird, if you guys didn't know, and it's also 99.9% .9 the case that we're gonna have a, uh, an eighth book because there's one collection of these books that has 
the the first three, and then it'll have stuff closer. So if the, if collection one has four books, you know it would make sense that collection two would have four books as well. But overall, pretty solid game theory. He did say that he's going to be taking a break from FNAF, at least for a little bit, but I honestly highly doubt that. I have a feeling he's probably going to come back uh, sometime in July, probably mid-July to late July, for a step closer game theory, which would make a whole lot of sense, you know, um, continuing the stories of these of the series. But I guess we're just going to have to wait for that. So, thank you everyone so much for watching another game theory reaction. I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.